What's up, guys? I'm Carl Carell. Welcome to another Music Gear Monday. Today, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane. On our Twitch channel, we do a thing where we chat with everybody about their favorite Music Gear, what we're working with, and a lot of other things. Our recent discussion was what music production software is easier to hop into and work in, and which music production software feels the least overwhelming at a glance. Throughout the whole conversation, we came down to a few different options. Obviously, everybody's going to be different depending on what type of music and style of music that you are trying to make. We came to the conclusion that if you are a beat maker, number one on our list was Serato Studio. And even though this is a newer program for beat making, it is a pretty easy program to hop into and play around with. On my previous channel, I discussed Serato Studio and made a video about about how easy or not so easy it is to hop into and use. Even though it's been a whole year since I've made that video, a lot of things remain with this program. Let's hop in, let's check out this previous video, and let's talk about some things that have changed and have not changed. Keep in mind this is my first time ever seeing or using Serato Studio, so a lot of the stuff in this video I'm still unfamiliar with. I hope you're having a good start to your week. Today we're gonna test out and see how easy it is to just hop in and play around with Serato Sample. I'm not gonna take up too much of your time because I know you got things to do. Some of us <laughs> got things to do, I don't know. But yeah, let's hop into it. Let's get into it and see what this program has to offer you. I got Serato Sample open the bottom side right here are your scenes. So these are your different scenes. Right now I have intro and scene two, which are pretty much the same thing. I just duplicated it to see what it's about. But in each scene, you have sections. So right now I have four sections in this first scene. And then in the second scene, I have two sections. And you can increase or decrease those sections up here in the top. Very similar to like a drum machine. So if you're familiar with any kind of drum sequencer software, very, very similar as far as like scenes and sections go. So that's kind of cool. And it's like very loop based. So I thought that was kind of a, a cool feature. It's a, It feels like a program you can easily hop into and just start making beats and loops. It's, it's really for people that want to make beats. It's not a full out recording program. So it's not something you would go in and try to track live drums or really try to track live vocals or anything like that. At least, at least from what I'm looking at, at least for this version and what it is uh, to start out with, I think that their primary goal here was for people to just kind of create and make beats and different things like that. So, so this section right here, these are the different instruments. So this old school drum kit was the first instrument that popped up when I opened the program up. This was the first instrument that popped. Matter of fact, let's do a brand new project. Let's do a brand new project. And so this kit is the first thing that pops up and down here at the bottom are the different, it's very similar to the way the Serato feels too because you have a little browser down here that has all of your sounds and effects and different things like that. Um, so what I do is, what did I do last time? Oh yeah, I clicked this kit. So I clicked on this old school drum kit, dragged it into here. And what that did was turn this drum sequencer into a drum kit. You can also, so I have this MIDI controller hooked up so I can use this MIDI controller for, and the sounds on some of these kits sound really good. So what you could do is, and what I did on that last little pattern that I showed you was, I basically just went in here and clicked a random, like I clicked at random. Like I just wanted to see what would come out of the most random, and it could be terrible, but you, you don't know.
like just doing that is like I would have never drummed that. I I wouldn't drum that pattern out. This sounds ridiculous, but it could be something cool. That's the cool thing about a lot of drum sequencers is you could tap in a lot of random patterns and get some weird stuff. Let's add an instrument. So there's a lot of really cool a lot of really cool loops and samples in here. What can we do with It didn't get it. It didn't get it. But anyway, you can you can even just write it in. So you have. Let's see if there's any. Let's add a bass in there. So another cool thing is that it's basically any instrument you bring it you, you bring up is automatically going to drop you in the key and then you have a little toggle switch right here that you can turn off and on to be like okay I don't I want to hit some additive notes I want to add some notes you could just turn off the play and key and do you know do some runs do whatever you want let's see what other So you have a little effects toggle up here. This little effects toggle should allow you to add some different different type of effects. So let's go back. So we got the intro, we got scene two, we got scene three. All right, so I made a basic little joint and then we'll add the xylophone in scene four. So if you look down here at the bottom, you have a song view and in that song view, um, you have your different scenes, but you also have a master. So when you play this back down here, it records a master and you can actually export that master. So I can go to export song it's going to ask me, do I want to export an MP3 or do I want to export a wave? I could do either one. Or I can export the stems to use inside of like Ableton or Logic or Pro Tools or whatever I want to do. So hopping into this program, it seems very, very easy to navigate. Very easy to pull loops and sounds and play in certain keys. I mean, it drops you in the key of most of the stuff that you're playing. And that was one of the good things about Serato, especially when you're importing music as a DJ. It gives you like the key of each song, the tempo and different things like that. They've always been really good at mapping out songs, mapping out sounds. So that's a really dope feature to have. I would love to see this as a plugin inside of Ableton. You know me, I'm an Ableton fan to the fullest. But even a, as a plugin inside of Logic or um, Pro Tools, they would definitely, you would win so hard if you made this a plugin 
inside of other programs because you know DJs producers in that world people that are already using those big platform programs can adapt to using this guy and really utilize the tools that they already use in the studio plus utilizing some of these features but that's just an idea I don't know I don't know what they they want to do going forward with Serato Studio but it's a really cool program I'm a fan already I think it's it's a dope program and I kind of want to see where they're going to go with it how far they're going to go with it what's going to be the next big thing so hats off to serato for making a really dope production program so that was taken over a year ago and within that year i had been able to use serato studio a plethora of times do a bunch of different beats in it and i'm a lot more used to it now i'm a lot more used to its workflow i gotta say we were talking on the chat ableton is still like my go-to it's still my crutch but serato studio is another program that i will be and i continue to be playing around in because it's a fun program it, it looks fun it feels fun and like we said in the chat it's just easy to get into. Now, looking at the pricing, so if you compare the price to a lot of other programs, it's a lot cheaper than a lot of the other programs that are out there, mainly because their subscription-based model is $9.99 a month. So, so if we hop in here and we look at their website and we look at pricing, $9.99 a month is their subscription-based model. It gives you two months of Splice for free. And if anybody that watches my streams over on Twitch, you know that I love using Splice sandwiches samples to spice things up and get creative. You also have a free version, which is basically so you can hop in, try it out, test it out, and see if you like it or not. I love when software companies give you the option to try their programs for free. It's an easy way to get customers hooked, but also it gives you an idea for whether or not you want the program. Because a lot of times you might download something because it looks cool and then start using it and say, you know, this isn't for me. The third option is the buy program full out $199. $199 is a great price. That's about the price of Logic or Reason. FL Studio is around $199 as well. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's somewhere around there. But that's a good price. I remember one of my biggest complaints was that you can't just buy the program outright. I'm one of those people that really hate these monthly subscriptions. I don't know why. It actually gives people more incentive to try things out and it's cheaper. So you, you get access to the programs right now without having to shell out all that money up front. All right, so that video was made over a year ago and there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know hopping into this program that I got to do now. And one of the things that I thought that you weren't able to do inside of this program was use VST plugins. So check out this video right here that's actually on Serato's website where they talk about using VST plugins. Third-party VST and audio unit plugin instruments can be used in the plugin deck. A plugin deck is similar to an instrument deck. We are able to set the instrument to play in key. You can also play the plugin instrument chromatically with playing key turned off. There are many third-party companies that make different types of plugin instruments that can be purchased separately to be used inside of Serato Studio. Some plugin instruments replicate analog, FM, additive, and wavetable synthesizers. As well, some plugin instruments such as samplers play back single and multi-sampled instruments like drums, pianos, strings, and other instruments. When you install a third-party VST and or audio units plugin instrument on your computer, you will need to have Serato Studio scan the plugins in order for them to be seen in the program. Go to the setup in the top right corner of Serato Studio. A new dialog window will appear. Under the Library tab, you will see Scan Plugins. When you click that, Serato Studio will scan the plugin folder on your computer to find the plugins. Once the scan is done, when you go to the Plugins tab in the library inside of Serato Studio, you will see all the third-party plugins. When opening Serato Studio for the first time, it will automatically scan the computer's plugins folder. When the scan is complete, you will see the plugins in the plugin tab in the library for Serato Studio. Once you load a third party plugin instrument, you will see it appear in Serato Studio as a separate window. In the plugin deck, you will see the name of the plugin. You will also see the show slash hide icon and eject. 
show slash hide will give you the option to show the plugin or to hide it. Eject will delete the third party instrument from the plugin deck. So now that you've seen Serato Studio and the ins and outs, how easy it is for somebody to be a beginner, hop right in, and how advanced it can get using third-party VSTs, you can decipher whether this program is for you or not. We did recommend this program on our list as number one as the easiest program to hop into and have some fun with. Make sure to join us over on Twitch for more of these conversations. That's going to be it for Music Gear Monday. If if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. I'm Carl Carell. We'll catch you here next week on Music Gear Monday. Peace.